guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Kelly. And I'm James. And we're, we're in Cambodia. Cambodia. Good morning. We are up super early this morning so we can go out and see the sunrise at Angkor Wat. It's five o'clock now. Our tuk-tuk driver is waiting for us. So we need to get on the road because sunrise is at 6.30. And to get a good spot, you have to be there at least an hour before. So we need to get going. I'm not really sure if you can see me at all, but it is almost 5.30 in the morning. It takes about 20 minutes to get from the city center to the Anchor Wat area. And if you did not buy tickets in advance, you do need to plan at least like 10 minutes to buy the tickets before going because they check the ticket at every entry point. So we got our tickets checked this morning, got a whole punch, and now we're walking up. And it seems like a lot of people are getting brought to a different entrance. And we are the only two people walking through this entrance. But I don't know if this is a shortcut or if we're just lucky. But it is clear skies. I don't know. If I'll be able to show you guys the stars, probably not. But you can see the stars clearly. And on you can see the summer part of it. So many people. Sean Lee. just finished the sunrise here at Angkor Wat. It was already pretty full when we arrived at about 5.30. So if you are coming, make sure you get there early and do not miss the five o'clock time to leave or the 4.40 time to leave or you will be closer in the back. Luckily, we did meet some Jongwo Ren friends um, that were in Cambodia because they work at a Confucius school, which is actually really cool. And they had enough room and I kind of squeeze my way in so I could put the time lapse up. In exchange, I sent it to them via airdrop, so I think that worked out for us. <laughs> we are going to head back to our hostel and rest up because we are actually leaving today. So we've already explored Angkor Wat and all of that good stuff yesterday. So we are going to just rewind this whole clip and you can see all of our exploration from yesterday. So let's go. Today we are heading out to Angkor Wat to go and explore some of the temples here. We have bought our tickets and we are buying the three day pass because I really want to go see the sunrise before we leave uh, Siem Reap tomorrow. We have a lovely guy named San and our driver, Dom. Today we are exploring the Angkor National Park and our first stop is walking around the beautiful Angkor Wat. Its original name was Nagara, which means City of the Gods. Surrounding Angkor Wat is a moat. It is believed that the moat represents the underworld, the hell and the ocean. And as you walk towards the first gate, you are walking in the main world. And once you reach the temple, it represents the heavens. Angkor Wat was originally built as a personal mausoleum for the king in the beginning of the 12th century. It was built as a Hindu temple for the god Vishnu. Surrounding the entire temple are these serpents that you can see as you walk up. These serpents are the guardians of the underworld. On the right is the male serpent called Naga and on the left is the female serpent called Nagi. Throughout the inside and outside of the temple, there are thousands of carvings depicting different stories or representations of the Hindu religion. 
Inside of Angkor Wat, there are three different levels. The first level is for learning, the second is for meditation, and then the third is for worshiping. In ancient times, only royalty and the kings could go onto the third level, but now it is open for everyone to go into, except for on Buddhist holidays, they'd close it. As you look at the temple, you'll notice how it has several windows and doors. The temple is like a maze, and there are fake windows and fake entrances that surround it. It is believed that this is to stop the evil spirits from entering. We're sitting on the third floor of the Angkor Wat right now, and normally they only allow 100 visitors at a time to visit this level. During high peak seasons, there'll be a queue, but right now, uh, because tourism hasn't built up that much yet here in Cambodia. There was no queue, which is awesome for us. So we're just sitting and relaxing. As we are sitting here, um, kind of right by the moat, we are admiring the middle tower. And there are still really good details left that you can still see that have been preserved well. And you can see the outline of the Naga snake and the different dancers around it as well. Standing right next to the original steps that they would use to go up to the third level of Angkor Wat. And you can see that they're really steep. They built these stairs this steep so that when you would go up them, you would have to crawl using your hands to show respect to the gods. And also when you go back down, you'd have to turn around and crawl because you could not show your back to the temple as you went down. Before the king went up, must pray first with sandal wood, sandal powder. Full moon time he pray here, new moon time he pray there with the high uh, brahmin to ask permission before he climb up. Mm. And other royalty come from the king's staircase to the right hand side based on zodiacs. It's, if it's a king dragon, then you come to snake, horse, goat, monkey, chicken, so on. Where is zodiac? Right here in the temple, you can hit your chest and you can hear the echo into the wall. You're supposed to hit your chest in an odd number. It is believed that when people are not feeling well, they will come into the echo chamber and they will close their eyes, pray, and then they will hit their heart three times. If you are to hit anywhere else in your body, you will not hear an echo. You will only hear it if you hit your heart. I quickly want to say that James is being an extreme trooper today. He got really sick uh, yesterday, fever and everything, and it's still not feeling well, but he really wanted to see the temples today. So he's out and about. We're taking it super slow, and we want to say a big thank you to our guide because she is just letting us take our time and not rushing us at all. And we have only finished Anchor Wat, which it's been since nine o'clock it's one o'clock we've really taken our time it's been almost three hours inside so it's been an, a great time and now we have two more temples to head to before going back into the city at the end of the 12th century buddhism became a more dominant religion slowly Angkor wat was converted to a place of worship for buddha and the Khmer ruler at the time ordered the Bayun temple to be built to embrace Buddhism for the current king. I am now inside the Bayuan temple and inside you can see there are different towers with faces on it. 
There are 54 towers and each tower has four faces. The faces represent the four Sibuam states. Love, compassion, sympathy, and equanimity. At the very center, there are eight faces and that represents the eight directions around the city. In the middle of the 13th century, Hinduism was reinstated by the next Khmer ruler, who ordered the removal of facial features of all the Buddhas. Throughout Anchor Park, there are over 72 different temples. If you have a three-day pass, you can go back in and explore the many different temples throughout. Top Ram was built during the end of the 12th century, around the time Bayun was built. The king ordered the construction of this temple in honor of his mother and filled the temple with over five tons of gold and diamonds. Behind me you can see what the temple looked like when it was found, but over the years they have reconstructed it to make it look like this. This temple was not destroyed by the trees that are surrounding it. It's actually been destroyed over the years by humans. And you can tell when you look at the cement blocks how they've been pulled down that everything just collapsed when the support systems were pulled. Top Ram was destroyed by Siam, who seized the city and forced the Khmer king to leave Siam Reap. During his ruling, all of the jewelry that was inside was stolen by the army. Once it was taken over, it was overgrown by the jungle, which is still shown today by the trees growing throughout the temple. This tree is famous because that's where they filmed the movie Tomb Raiders. <laughs> We have just finished our tour at the Anchor National Park and we want to say a big thank you to our guide son, Akun. Yeah. <laughs> if you are interested in going on an Anchor National Park tour and you can contact Sun by using her WhatsApp contact and it'll be linked in the description below. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe so you can see more of our travels through Asia. Bye.